met a friend, even if their communication apparently has been cut off. On Friday, Garnett said no longer he is speaking to longtime Boston Celtics teammate Allen Ray yeah. Allen after he signed with the rival Miami Heat over the summer. It's very disappointing that uh, Ray Allen has really taken this to heart that Kevin Garnett, who is a friend uh, with Ray uh, with Allen, uh, they have they're they're not talking only because Allen went to Miami and uh, I think it was time for Ray Allen to move because he was starting to get old and I think that the bench for Boston was looking um, was empty for another point guard spot and I think they got one during the off season and free agency and I think that Ray Allen with his contract also being up I think that he wanted to go to a team that was in, that was in contention to win a title not a team that's getting older. And possibly my, and possibly, we'll start rebuilding soon. So, you know, Robert, can you just give me a little bit more? On you know, how do you feel about this? You look at a situation where if you're about, if you're one of your good friends, is on a team with you, and just say I'm on the we're all we're both on the Giants right now, but what happens is, it's free agency right now. We're we're in the free agent. I'm in the free agent market right now. All right. And I decide to go with the Dodgers. Now we, that, that, yeah, that's kind of true. That's kind of relevant because the Giants and Dodgers have a rivalry, and the Celtics and the Heat are starting to have their rivalry of their own. With there, it was such great players. Like for the Heat, you have LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade, and for the Celtics, you have Rajon Rondo, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce. So that, I, 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 I would agree with you with that. That's a, that's a good comparison with uh, two different sports. You know, you look at this as a situation where. You you see both friends are are like are mad at each other because you don't want to ever go to the rival team. You would go to another team, but that's kind of like the Jeff Kent situation from yes, San Francisco. Jeff Kent. We didn't. I don't know what happened. Then I was too young to really know what happened with his contract. We we moved. We he went. He goes to Houston, and then a year or two later, he goes to Los Angeles, and he becomes the hated player. So. And did he win MVP uh, once, I think? I believe so. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to become the MVP and one of the best players in the entire on the entire team, a fan favorite, and then turn and turn yourself into the most hated player uh, from the Giants' standpoint. It's really sad that this happens between good friends. This is what Ray Allen had to say. That's a shame. I'm a good person to talk on the phone. I've been weird in trade situations the last few years, and I've heard some rumors about that. You always felt you had one foot and one foot out, so I can't worry about it. And this is what... I'm yeah. not... Yeah, that's some harsh words from Garnett. Garnett, I think he should regret that he said that because... That probably that just ruined that just ruined his uh that just ruined their friendship pretty much their relationship as friends and uh, as teammates possibly if if anytime soon if they make the All Star team if both of them come into the All Star game uh, representing the Eastern Conference they're not gonna be a guy they're not gonna be really friendly with each other so that's very 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 sad and uh, quickly before uh, we continue uh, on this topic uh, this is DJ Fizz from one hundred one. Point nine, the mix. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, actually, this the GJ Earthman is DJ Fizz, but uh, any, anyway, uh, shout out to them. They have some DJ Fizz has some terrific shows on one hundred one point nine, the mix. Tune into that a lot. Uh, very great, uh, very good music. It really calms me and Robert down when we do uh, our work from uh, school. Tweet uh, like little. Twink twink or whatever they they call it, but yeah. Let's go back to the situation. Dwayne Wade had a little uh, had something to say about the situation. He said, "Quote: Garnett does it doesn't need to be talking to our team anyway, so it's all good. Allen doesn't look too bad in a Heat uniform. At first it was weird, but now I'm getting used to it. And uh, the Heat do host the Celtics to open the season a day before Halloween, October 30th. So that's not that far away. That's only a month away." That is actually, that's actually a month and a day away. So we are not that far from the beginning of the regular season. I, I, was, I remember, this seems so long ago, but summer, su the Summer League on NBA TV, it felt like a year ago because it went by so fast and so, so long ago, but it was only three months ago. 
Yeah, I know. See, I'm gonna agree with you on that. I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. And you know, when the C when the Heat hosts when the Heat ho host the Celtics, it's it's gonna be weird. It's not gonna be the same anymore. It's gonna be they're gonna be it's gonna be hatred between Garden and Allen. They're not. Even, I don't know what they're gonna say to each other. At it's that gonna game. be heated for a few more years because of this. I think that two players can really depend on if these two teams are rivals or these two teams are just regular teams that play against each other and sometimes have a little hatred towards them. But with the Giants and the Dodgers, it was Juan Marichal uh, that really set the tone for the Do Giants and Dodgers uh, Giants and Dodgers rivalry. Babe Ruth was the one that, that started the Red Sox-Yankees one. So it's usually one guy or two guys. It isn't the entire team. It's one or two guys that start a thing that can last a century, like what happened to the uh, Red Sox and the Yankees. And actually, another one is the Cardinals and the Cubs, mainly because they, they, they're they so close together regionally in baseball. And, uh, you know, this is pretty big. So let's go to another topic. Uh, Jay-Z is having his own concert at the newly opened Barclays Center in, in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, he is repping the Brooklyn Road jersey that they're going to rep. Is as all black says Brooklyn on it has a created number four on it. Robert, how do you how do you like the new jersey? You guys can also look at it on uh, Google Images. You know it looks really sick. You know Jay Z rocking it as the owner and open the concert Friday night by wearing the team's new road jersey on the stage at the Barclays Center. And he's looking good with it. And you know I think that this really shows an owner is really supporting his team spirit. And the Nats opened their first season in Brooklyn at their brand new $1 billion arena on November 1st against the rival Knicks. Knickerbockers! Wow. And the Knicks. And Jeremy Lin is off that team, so it's going to be an interesting fight. Carmelo Anthony, I know Lin, there was a Lin sanity that one year, and that's always going to stick with that. Now he's saying that to the Southwest in Houston. I think he's going to do pretty good there. Let's, 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 okay, Jay Z thing is not. Not important anymore. Let's talk about the insanity. Everybody was making such a big deal about the ten games that he had that he just did pretty good, and then coincidentally he was in a very high media market city in New York for the Knicks, and he made such a big difference. Yeah, not he did. really, not really actually. But do, how do you think Jeremy Lin will do in Houston this year? Because Houston. Jeremy Lin was on Houston before. He got cut, only receiving about $41,000. Now, he's going on to the Houston Rockets again for a contract worth three years, $27 million, something like that. How do you I, think he's going to do How do you think he's going to do You know, Steven, I really don't know how he's going to do. It's going to be whether it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a change. And when he changes, he went to the Warriors and he got cut as well. I mean, he, he was on the Warriors for a couple of seasons. You got to remember that. Getting cut wasn't very... I, I don't know if he... You look at some players that do bad on one team, but they come out really good on another team. I've noticed that the last couple of years. I can't really... On the top of my head, I really can't think of an example right now. But, I mean, you look at, you look at this situation as you have... Jeremy Lin moving back to an old team, and it, he go back to his old ways. Yeah, that's true, but I think that he has improved to be such a better player. Um, and, like, just to be a better player overall, he did show some sparks during the playoffs against Miami last season, but, you know, like you said, there's it's questionable if, you know, if he's going to do good or not because there's some guys – in the NBA that will move to a different team and they don't really produce to what their their standards and their expectations are like. Here's an example, Chris Bosh. We, he is a part of the trade with the Raptors and the Heat and that brought the big three. He has not done that well. He did well. He did better last season, but two seasons ago in his first season, he did not do well at all. I think he was one of the disappointments and the negatives for the Miami Heat ball club that lost to the Mavericks in the finals two seasons ago, but, you know, that's one example, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now, here's, um, you know, another another player, or two players that went to the Lakers in the offseason, Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, how do you think they're going to do? Um, you know, I think that 
the two players will do well for a Lakers team. I think the Lakers will actually be a really good team. I don't see much contention between the Suns because with Nash gone, but it could be it could be interesting enough that you see that. I think Kobe, you know, Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash will work good with Ron Artest, which is meta world peace, I guess. That's what we have to say. So, but it's going to be interesting enough. And we actually have a caller here. And we have a caller. Cameron. Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait. I think it's Cameron. I don't think it's Cameron, really. It's like a 50. Oh, no, really. Hello. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, can you state your name, please? Uh, yes, it is Cameron. And I want to talk about Jeremy Lin really quickly. Uh -huh. I I'm going to be honest, and I'm not going to put the blame on him, but I honestly don't see a really great year for him and the Rockets because he's on a team with a scoring output that's not going to be enough in a Western Conference, as we know, the wild, wild west, ton of shootouts, ton of scoring. I don't think they can compete at a high level and make the playoffs. I see this as a team that doesn't make the playoffs, and I still see this as a developmental franchise. They did great in the draft this year. Uh, but that does not mean that he's going to have a good year. And it's going to take some adjustment. I still think Lynn uh, has some issues turnovers-wise. He kind of dribbles. His dribbling is a little bit off whack at times. Um, he's a great, To me, I think he's a good post point guard because... He, he kind of reminds me of a little bit of Andre Miller, you know, 6'3", 200 pounds, I believe, around that type of area. So he's a big body as a point guard. They can utilize him in the post game. That'd be vital for the Rockets. I don't know if consistently he has the stamina and it, it consistently to bring this team and carry this team all the way to the playoffs. It's going to be a real struggle. I don't see it happening, guys. And, look, well, I want Jeremy Lin to do well. I want all players to do well. But the honest truth is, even if he puts up amazing numbers, he doesn't have enough pieces to go to the playoffs. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cameron, for being on our show. And I'm going to have to agree with you on some of those points as he has gone. But, you know, I look at this as a situation where it, it it's going to be adjustment. It's an adjustment between... It's going to be an adjustment between everything he does for the Rockets. So we'll take a break here, but when we come back, we're actually going to go to some MLB here. Yeah, we'll be talking about Brandon McCarthy. He is progress uh, progressing uh, after being hit in the head with a uh, line drive. Also, we'll be, we'll be talking about Chipper Jones uh, during the pregame uh, being honored, from the, uh, being honored uh, by the Braves organization before uh, – Playing in his last uh, postseason, uh, the Braves clinched uh, a playoff spot. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be wild card or division. But um, and also the Indians' jaw, the Indians' manager jaw uh, spot is up for grabs. Sandy Alomar Jr. and Terry Francona look like the leading candidates. We'll be giving you more on that when we come back to Siemens All uh, to the Deets and Siemens All Out Sports Show here on on the National Sports Network in affiliation with Spreaker.com. And we actually have um, a comment here. Diano's, I don't want to say that. Um, Diano's FU Network. He said, yo, let's get a shout out to him. Uh, he, I think I think we can follow him. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll have to check that out. I know he has a, I haven't really heard his network, but I know he wants to We're very something. interested in listening to you guys' network if you want, so... Uh, if you have any messages, you want us to listen to uh, your show. Maybe after uh, after we have our show, you can definitely ask us that. So when we come back, we'll be talking to you guys about some baseball and some Pac-12 stuff with a California state law. Time on CAP, but this right here, dog, there is no fee to get me down. 
fine when he feel his feet. See, I never trust him. Catch me, I'm balling. Tailor made custom, must be I'm all in. Still want it like worse come to worse to the point where I never call.